This RTX 3070 PC has a rather unique offering above a lot of other pre-built systems. It's ready to ship next day. That does mean that you can't customize anything about it, it comes as spec for everyone, but it's at a pretty compelling price point, and at least at the time of filming, offers an RTX 3070 in stock, and some pretty decent performance too. So, should you buy one? Well, let's find out. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It makes sense to start with running you through what you get for your money. In this case, you'll be parting with a hair over £1,300. For that, you get an i5-10400F, a B460 motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM, the RTX 3070 we've already mentioned, and a 500 gig SS SATA SSD, a one terabyte hard drive, and a 700 watt power supply. Now for me, that's a bit of a strange configuration. I understand why they've gone that way, especially with the 1400F dropping in price a fair bit since it launched and the equivalent Ryzen seemingly only going up in price. I get it, but having a locked CPU on a locked motherboard with 3000 megahertz RAM that can only be run at a maximum of 2666, well, that's just a bit frustrating. That is more Intel's fault than anything, but the fact that it's in this PC is something that you will be getting for your money, and so we kind of have to talk about it. You might have also noticed the Intel stock cooler in there. If this was any other chip that's any more powerful than the 1040F, that would be a terrible decision. But remarkably, and possibly thanks to very good front to back airflow and the relatively low power nature of that chip, the maximum recorded temperature I had was just 75 degrees Celsius, and in terms of noise level, well, you can hear it on next to me, and it's certainly not too bad. You can definitely hear the airflow, and there is a little bit of a sort of mechanical whine to it, but it's certainly not unusable, and even while gaming, it doesn't get overly loud, and if you have headphones on, you definitely won't notice it. As for the choice of storage, it's alright, but at this price point, it would have been nice to have seen a faster M.2 SSD instead of a SATA one, or even a larger 2TB hard drive, as that would have been great, but we'll take what we can get. Also, the power supply, while I'm sure it is plenty reliable and certainly adequate for the job, the Technicolor rainbow worth of cabling in the bag it leaves a lot to be desired. But build quality is good. As you can see, the cable management is done really well. Everything is secured as you would expect. And generally speaking, didn't have too many problems. The BIOS was pre-configured well, including the RAM speed set. The only uh, setup issue I had was with the one terabyte hard drive. As well, it had a volume set up. The drive was initialized. The volume didn't have a drive letter assigned to it, and so I had to manually set that myself so that I could actually use the drive and start putting files on it. This is technically a sort of early system, and so I expect that for the, the customer units that will ship out to you if you were to buy one, that won't be a problem, but I saw it, and so I kind of have to mention it. Oh, and as for packaging, Overclockers UK do a great job here. The system came in the box for the case, which in and itself came in a larger box with a good bit more packing material and came with large end caps to protect it even further. And they used self-expanding foam inside the case to hold everything together, so a really, really good job there. Right, let's take a look at the important bit, the performance numbers, starting with gaming. They're starting off with COD Modern Warfare. This was tested at ultra settings across the three main resolutions, and it does, it does a pretty good job. You're getting 172 FPS average at 1080p, 130 at 4040p, and 78 at 4K, which again, you can always turn those settings down a bit if you want to say, make use of a ultra high refresh rate monitor at uh, 1080p, or maybe just a higher refresh rate monitor at 1440p, or if you're that way inclined, even at 4K as well. So you can get a pretty decent experience. When it comes to Fortnite, this game is clearly better optimized at 1080p as you're getting 192 FPS average, even with epic settings, although with ray tracing turned off, but DirectX 12 enabled. At 1440p, you're still getting a very, very playable 139 FPS average, and at 4K, we're getting, again, a very playable uh, 71. And again, if you wanted to maximize uh, something like a high refresh rate monitor, or maybe a 360 hertz monitor at 1080p, since this is more of an esports title, then that's perfectly possible if you turn a couple of settings down. 
When it comes to Watch Dogs Legion, you may see 80 FPS and think that's a bit of a, well, a low number to see, but that's to say nothing of the system and more of the game because it is incredibly difficult to run and 80 FPS at 1080p is actually a pretty decent figure. When it comes to 4040p, we're still getting over 60 FPS at ultra settings, which is a very good sign, and at 4K we're getting 36, and so you definitely want to turn those settings down. As a point of comparison, this system performs very similarly to the 1500X and 3070 build guide video I did pretty recently, thanks to a combination of this system having a faster version of the 3070, but having a slower CPU. And actually, speaking of the CPU, I did some productivity benchmark numbers as well, so let's take a look at those. The Cinebench single-threaded score is okay, but it's not fantastic. It definitely could be better, considering that most Ryzen chips, even the third-gen chips, will generally get you around 500, and the new ones will get you closer to 6. Same goes for the multi-threaded score, which is reflected in the Blender render times, taking 5 minutes and 19 seconds to render the BMW scene, and 26 minutes and 48 seconds to render the Gooseberry scene. Again, it's okay, it's certainly usable enough, but it's not the fastest. So it can definitely game, and I'll push through some productivity as well, and if you wanted to stream on it, that will be fine, especially if you use the NVENC encoder instead of X264, uh, so it's a pretty decent usage experience. Now, can you build a better system for the price? Well, definitely. In fact, you can build this exact system for around £50 less, or you can tweak the parts to build a more sort of well-rounded system and maybe spend a tiny bit more, but like I said, it'll be a little bit more well-rounded. You can even buy pre-built systems that are more well-rounded and for similar prices from Overclock UK or from plenty of other system integrators in the UK. But can you have one of those delivered next day with an RTX 3070? No, you definitely can't, not even close. And can you have those with a three-year warranty as standard? Again, also probably not, unless you're buying from Overclock UK. I know that folks like me tend to discount warranty, especially on pre-built systems, as a, a sort of non-factor we, we don't really care about, as we're happy to troubleshoot uh, problems and solve them ourselves. But for the people who are I have less initiated, less knowledgeable, or even just have less spare time or mental energy to spend on tearing apart their PC to fix a dumb issue, well, having a warranty, especially a three-year comprehensive one as standard, is actually quite a nice thing, and to be able to call up and speak to people who should actually know what they're talking about is, uh, is definitely a good peace of mind for the, well, the sort of person who wants a pre-built PC. So, should you buy this? Well, it's a good gaming PC. It should last you a good few years to come, and it can be relatively easily upgraded if you want a bit of extra CPU or GPU horsepower, maybe some extra storage. All that's pretty easy. And the bonus of having it shipped next day, especially if you're watching this when the video goes out, you have until I think the 20th of December to order and still get it before Christmas. That's how fast they ship it that is a pretty nice deal. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of this system? What do you think of the whole next day PC idea? Would you rather build it yourself or would you rather go with a, a longer process but that you can customize to, to meet your needs? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Now if you want to check out this system, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. That will be to Overclock UK sites and to make it clear that will be an affiliate link so if you buy it I will get a, a commission for you purchasing it, uh, but feel free to check out, the pricing may change and hey, even the spec might change, so feel free to take a look. Otherwise, that is pretty much it for this video. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, then there are a load of other links in the description you can check out from other affiliate links or places like Amazon, or there's VPN options. There's also things like Patreon if you want to get access to our Money Men Discord chat and sponsor free videos or things like merch or hoodies or t-shirts. This one or a load of other cool designs. There will be plenty of other videos on the end cards you can check out, so feel free to carry on watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.